Hello and welcome to Comic Book Herald's 2019 Absolute Carnage Full Event Review, what the 2019 event means for the Marvel Universe. Marvel Comics' five-issue Absolute Carnage event series comes to a close this week with the final chapter in Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman's Symbio Bloodbath involving Venom, Spider-Man, Immortal Hulk, and the Avengers, issue number five, wrapping up today. I have read and reviewed and... Of course, ordered chronologically over on Comic Book Herald's full event view reading order, the only reading order that has been updated weekly, with every single tie-in telling you whether or not it is worth it. Today I'll be answering, how is the full Absolute Carnage story and is it worth reading? How does Absolute Carnage fit into Donny Cates' broader Marvel Universe comics? And what does the event's conclusion mean for the Marvel Universe moving forward? Hey everybody, I'm your host, Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. Thanks for joining here. If you like the content, please consider liking and subscribing over on the YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. Uh, you can't really like, but I mean, you could like it personally. Please subscribe to the podcast, Best Comics Ever, over at Comic Book Herald, or just to always go to ComicBookHerald.com. You can find links to the reading orders and guides and content most applicable to the Absolute Carnage discussion in the show notes. But in the meantime, let's talk Absolute Carnage. It flows out of the pages of Cates and Stegman's work on Venom, injecting two core concepts into the legacy of Carnage. One, Cletus Cassidy has been brought back to life by the cult of Carnage, and they found their god, Null, and want his power. Hence, Cletus now refers to himself as a god repeatedly. And two, symbiotes leave a piece of themselves behind with anyone they've ever bonded with, forming what's being called a codex, after being discovered by the maker, previously of the Ultimate Universe. Carnage is seeking all these by, yes, ripping the spines from anyone who has ever worn a symbiote. He believes that collecting the codices will awaken Null, god of the symbiotes, from his prison on the planet of the symbiotes. As it turns out, when you look back at Marvel history, an insane number of Marvel characters have at one time or another bonded with the symbiote. So yes, it's very easy for Absolute Carnage to operate as an event across the entire Marvel Universe. There are 25 tie-in issues that I've counted in addition to the five main event issues. Again, I sort them into chronological order weekly on Comic Book Herald and answer whether the tie-ins is worth reading. You can find that full link in the show notes. With most of the tie-ins focusing on legacy symbiotes, the Life Foundation's five from Venom Lethal Protector, for example, or famously bonded heroes like Deadpool and the Avengers from Carnage USA. The point of Absolute Carnage is to see if Cletus Cassidy can collect all these codices before Eddie, working in tandem with the Maker, can destroy them. If you want even more background, I do recommend checking out the Road to Absolute Carnage video I did before the event started. Since Venom was one of my favorite comic books of 2018 and 2019, I had very high hopes for Absolute Carnage. The first issue is an absolute knockout, and honestly one of the best event number one issues I've ever read. The issue does a great job summarizing the developments of Venom, particularly Null, God of Symbiotes, for any new audiences as well. One of the coolest things about the work writer Donny Cates is doing across Marvel is that the null details apply to everything from Venom to Absolute Carnage to Silver Surfer Black to War of the Realms. The null, you know, saga is is sweeping across the Cates verse that he's been creating across a number of issues. Issue number one of Absolute Carnage is oversized, 64 pages, and honestly, the craft and quality blew me away. Ryan Stegman, J.P. Meyer, and Frank Martin are a phenomenal artistic combination, bringing blood-red suspense with every page. Uh, if you distilled the essence of, like, 90s radness inherent in Venom and why so many people love just the design down to color and design, that's what you find here in Dragon Venom and the new Carnage design that they've come up with to make him, you know, even more sinister than he's ever been. And for his part, Donny Cates evokes a poetry to Carnage that I didn't know was possible. It's, it's beautiful work. All around, I am a new colossus of bleeding red Megadeth. I am the red right hand of the king in black. This is some heavy metal carnage poetry, and it's amazing. Absolute Carnage is also the perfect point in this Venom run to bring in Spider-Man. Cates writes a very good blend of naive humanity and humor to Peter Parker. It's not the first time Cates has written Peter Parker. Technically, there's a short story he does. Um, well, he does a, a cameo in Dark Strange and a short story he did with Chip Zdarsky with an actual spider. Um, but this is the most he's brought Pete, and really the only time he's brought Pete, into the Venom run. And it makes a lot of sense, right? You bring Carnage to the table, much like back in the 90s with Maximum Carnage. This is a situation where Venom, Eddie Brock, and Spider-Man may need to team up. And of course, here they do. As Absolute Carnage progressed, I do think it lost some focus, or at least the scale stopped escalating. For all the talk of Null and the cosmic symbiote cult, Absolute Carnage remains pretty grounded in New York City, 
for you know the issues two, three, and four, more tied to Carnage's impact on the city and familiar heroes like Miles Morales than anything more broadly symbiote exclusive. Here we see Miles Morales after he's been infected by Carnage symbiotes, which happens in Absolute Carnage number two. And we see, of course, how Miles deals with that in his own spinoff tie-in series, written by Salad and Ahmed. I'll note here, too, that the main event is buoyed significantly by the best tie-ins. For example, the impact of Immortal Hulk Venom reveal in Absolute Carnage number three is aided tremendously by Immortal Hulk uh, scribe Al Ewing stepping in for a tie-in that fits very specifically in his own Immortal Hulk run. For the record, the tie-in slots between Immortal Hulk number 22 and number 23. I'm honestly impressed by how seamlessly Ewing weaves his own Immortal Hulk narrative into the event here. It's a masterclass in, well, symbiosis between titles. Ewing is impressing, I think, with almost everything he does Immortal Hulk related these days. But to be able to connect to what is, like, my 1B of the best comics at Marvel right now, that being Immortal Hulk be able to connect that to the absolute carnage event so seamlessly is fascinating. It actually makes Hulk's appearances in the pages of absolute carnage a little less um, just for show. In this case, without the Ewing written tie-in, absolute carnage would be way too reliant on the action figure smash up of Venom and Immortal Hulk teased at the end of absolute carnage number three and a big part of the plot of absolute carnage number four. Now carnage does prevail in a fight, against Venomized Hulk, and I'm not sure Kate's quite got the immortal bits here, um, but that's really not the story he's telling. You know, it's more of a traditional Hulk wearing a Venom symbiote, but, you know, Carnage, that is the power level he's at throughout the, out the entire Absolute Carnage event is it's probably the most powerful, nearly the most unbeatable, or, or seemingly, that we've seen Cletus Cassidy um, with the Carnage symbiote. You know, he is he has come back, and he's imbued with this, like, godlike power and this this definitely a sense of purpose in terms of calling null to earth in order to as he puts it turn all of earth into a fine red mist as far as the kate's written venom series goes the tie-ins primarily concentrate on eddie's son dylan while eddie brock is off of course rocking dragon wings and throwing down with the hordes of carnage while the makers babysitting dylan phrases i didn't expect to say dylan meets sleeper another child of the venom symbiote this time a symbiote in control of the dead kree soldier tel car it's not a captivating use of venom as the series has been but it does effectively build some mystery to dylan in particular when the son of eddie brock attempts to join with the sleeper symbiote the symbiote freaks out and asks him what are you dylan's got all these sort of mysterious uh abilities it would seem related to symbiotes that really start to get explored um or, or a little more detailed in Absolute Carnage number five. As expected, this is not the case for all tie-ins. On average, Absolute Carnage is akin to War of the Realms, albeit on a smaller scale, with a handful of very good tie-ins, most generally decent, and a scoop of passables. Like anything, your mileage will vary depending on your fandom. For example, a lot of the Absolute Carnage tie-ins that I was least into, like Separation Anxiety and Lethal Protectors, are the most heavily connected to the 90s comics of Venom and the Symbiotes. They also connect to the main event story through literally a single panel, although it's a relevant moment in Absolute Carnage number five. At its best, Absolute Carnage stays grounded in what made Venom such a hit for Marvel to begin with, with amazing collaborative skills by Kate Stegman and company being used to their fullest. Absolute Carnage actually does feel like the oversized kind of event that makes sense for where Venom has been heading this whole time, you know? It's a world a ruck, a run amok in, in Carnage, you know, the cult of Carnage and his symbiotes. It's putting the Avengers to the task, you know, they can barely keep up with all of the symbiote madness that is going on. They're getting their butts handed to him as Eddie Brock essentially has to try to save the day by shutting down Cletus Cassidy. Now that it's concluded, I'm, I am leaning towards a spot just inside the top 10 for Absolute Carnage and Venom on my final year-end Best Marvel Comics of 2019 list. Um, I'll admit, when it started, because Absolute Carnage number one was so great, I thought, wow, the Venom-Absolute Carnage combo here is going to be probably a top five entry. Um, but then through the middle issues, you know, I was I was debating whether or not it would it would even make the list. It definitely will now. It's still very good. I think Venom in particular, you know, it, it slows through the weight of Absolute Carnage, uh, but if you look at Absolute Carnage as just a continuation and extension of Cates and Stegman's work on Venom, which it very much is, then I think they're still writing and producing one of my favorite Marvel comics coming out, um, you know, both in 2018 and 2019. Okay, so what does Absolute Carnage mean for the Marvel Universe moving forward? And how does it fit into Donny Cates' big picture plan? Uh, first things first, null. 
the the symbiote god he's awake right so cletus cassidy's plan here for a that is revealed in absolute carnage number five was basically either he can win as he puts it by killing eddie and killing his son and taking all of the symbiote codices or he can lose uh, which is Eddie defeating him, but then all the codices come to Eddie and still all the symbiote, you know, like codexes through this plot device, they all go to Eddie and still wake up null. So it's basically like either way, you know, and, and Eddie's decision, his very climactic decision at the end of Absolute Carnage number five is revealing, first of all, to Dylan Brock that he is his son because he's been keeping this a secret throughout Venom, uh, but then also choosing his son over the fate of, of you know the world effectively although in, to eddie's credit one very sensible decision for any father but two it's kind of a no-win <laughs> no-win situation there with good old cletus but null he is free he is coming for us all he is awake what does this mean for the donny cates big picture plan i think the first thing we can expect and it's all kind of been building to this not kind of it's all been building to this since the first arc of venom which is so good back in may 2018 um i expect to see null story continue in the now donny cates written thor kicking off in 2020 i'd be pretty surprised if we didn't see it there as well i'd also note there are some absolute um there are there's some hanging threads that absolute carnage leaves to explore uh, for example, the fate and plan of the Maker. So the Maker, the Reed Richards of the Ultimate Universe, he has been working with Venom Codices for a while now, kind of, but he's, you know, as revealed in Absolute Carnage, Eddie thought he was destroying them. No, he was actually maintaining them. Why was he doing this? I'm a little unclear what his plan actually was, and I'm also a little unclear where he got off to after being taken over by symbiotes. I doubt this is the last we've seen of the Maker. We have Dylan's powers, and symbiote connections so we need to explore he was able to destroy a carnage symbiote pretty easily what is it that's inside of dylan brock um and what's it going to mean now that he knows that eddie brock is his father eddie absorbed a lot of symbiotes at the end of that what's that going to mean for symbiote island moving forward which is the next big venom story we know donny cates have been working with a uh, longtime great spider-man artist mark bagley and then of course finally as i mentioned where and how is null this god of the symbiote is going to be popping up. What's his first move? I don't think he's going to come to Earth right away, you know, because that would seem to precipitate another Earth, you know, War of the Realm style event. And, and I don't think that's what we're going to see. But that said, is he going to be out in the cosmos wreaking havoc? And what exactly is that going to look like? And how is Thor? going to handle that will we see a thor venom crossover in 2020 my money is on absolutely i'd be quite shocked if donny cates and nick klein's work on thor didn't actually bleed into the work that he's done so far on venom you know it's something i've talked about as i put together videos about the donny cates marvel verse he's doing these you know stories in miniature maybe even five issues at a time but there's a lot of connective tissue between all of them and i expect we'll continue to see that moving into the new year so this has been the review comic book heralds of absolute carnage thanks everybody for listening if you like the content here on youtube again please consider liking and subscribing if you like the podcast please subscribe to best comics ever or as always just go on over to comicbookherald.com share with a friend and find all your reading orders and comic book analysis thanks everybody and as always enjoy the comics <laughs>